Two years ago we gave up our jobs and our house in London in order to find a life that was more deeply connected to nature. These days we're raising our two children in a year in a forest in New Zealand and we're so glad we're doing it. It might not be everybody's cup of tea but for us it's exactly right. We used to live in London in an old Victorian terrace house made of bricks. It had three bedrooms. I worked for Oxfam which is a big NGO and my husband was a youth worker. So we had a pretty full-on life in London and we did love it. But when we had our second daughter we kind of realized that we were hankering for something else there was a part of us that had a real longing to be more in touch with the wilderness. We had a lot of stuff in London. We had managed to fill the entire house, mostly with retro secondhand junk. And we kind of didn't want to leave it all behind. So we got half a shipping container and filled that with our most precious junk. <laughs> Some of that stuff I look at around our place now and I think, hmm, why did we bring that all the way from England? But it's really, really hard to make those decisions and it was too much of a challenge to not bring anything. But most of our stuff we sold in a big open home day. Over the course of that day, hundreds of people came through and walked off with all of our stuff. Honestly, I didn't find the move scary at all. Even though we didn't have a job to come to, we didn't know where in New Zealand we were going to live, we didn't know anything about what our New Zealand life would look like. We just saw the whole thing as an adventure. I think that's a little bit to do with our personality type. We kind of close the door on one thing and then we're just all guns are blazing into the very next thing. So that was the attitude we turned up in New Zealand with. The first thing we did within a week of arriving in New Zealand was to buy a big, beautiful bus. We then all jumped in the bus and toured around the North Island of New Zealand looking for a town that captured our hearts. Pretty much within 10 days, we'd found the town. <laughs> So we've got two yurts. Our first one is five meters big and we lived in that for 18 months and it was really cool and really beautiful but we did want to go bigger. So we kept that one and now that one is on Airbnb and now we live in one that is 50 square foot altogether and that one came from America and it has real windows that are double glazed and you can open and shut them and they have mosquito nets inside and it's got two proper doors and it just feels quite a lot more substantial than our little one. The things we loved about yurt living were the, the roundness of it. Something feels really peaceful and almost verging on sacred when you're living in a round space. We also loved that it's only a really thin canvas with some insulation between you and the outdoor world. So you're really involved in the elements. We also love that yurts are affordable and that they're beautiful. So I thought I'd give you a little bit of a tour of our big yurt. So right now we're standing in the front entrance. So then you walk in the door here and you've got a choice, you can come into our dining room. This is where we tend to eat, just there. Um, and we keep our cups and saucers and things and we also have a very unfunctional um, kind of bookcase thing that's made out of an old liquor cabinet. But as you can see, it is a little bit messy. It's a quick walk into our kitchen. We have, we currently cook by gas, but we're hoping to change that because obviously it's not uh, a very helpful thing from the earth and we'd rather cook with a renewable uh, energy source. Um, in the winter, we can use our fire and we really love cooking on the fire and we can have an oven. But in the summer, it's just primarily the stove top. We get water from our stream, so that's really handy. We can just tap into that and it's heated when we light our fire. So behind me, you can see my little collection of pots and pans, which I just can't resist picking up in the op shop, which is a secondhand store for Americans who are watching. And this just behind me here is our bedroom. We started off upstairs in the mezzanine, but 
quickly found that we felt just a little bit exposed up there too close to the ceiling and we kept bumping our heads so then we made a little room underneath the mezzanine and we currently sleep there it's not perfect like we we intend to put bunks in there and make it a little bit more useful with better storage and this is where we spend a lot of our time this is our lounge area so there's lots of suits here we uh, love to have people over and and hang out and have parties and there's also my little desk where i do all of my work now living in a yurt isn't completely challenge free it is one big open space so it can be tricky if you've got a few families over and the kids want to play really noisy games and the families want to have a very serious conversation. We also did used to sleep upstairs in our mezzanine and then changed our bedroom to be downstairs under the mezzanine and that was because of how loud the weather can be. So you'd be lying in bed and you'd actually wake up because of the wind flapping across the roof or the rain pouring. I'd say those are probably the two big challenges of yet living. The rest of it we love. I love the big space. I love being able to chop veggies for dinner and still have a conversation with my children in their playroom. I just like that our that all of our lives, all of the members of the family's lives are completely intertwined all day long. I realise that would drive some people crazy, but I love it. When we left London, we knew that we wanted to focus on my freelance writing more intensely. So over the last few years, I've been building that up and I've written a few eBooks and I have a YouTube channel and I have a couple of columns that I write for magazines such as The Green Parent in the UK. So we've been able to arrive at a place where I can work from the yurt using our Wi-Fi connection and that feels really special that we can do that. We also supplement our income uh, with our little yurt being on Airbnb and our plan for the future is to do more farm-based activities as well. So my husband works on the farm mostly. We split the parenting exactly in half. So I do three days a week work and he does three days a week work and then we do full-time parenting on the other days. We have a herd of Highland cattle. We also plan on maybe specialising in a certain crop, maybe garlic, and selling that to local restaurants. <laughs> a typical day for us starts very, very slowly. We are unschooling our children, and one of the real bonuses of that is that we don't have to rush off and be anywhere at the crack of dawn. So we use that to our full advantage. We will often stay in bed until 8 or 8.30, and we'll have a cup of tea in bed and the girls will get busy with some random things. They also get half an hour of internet watching in the mornings uh, while me and Tim have our coffee and breakfast and figure out what we're gonna do with our day because every day looks really quite different. Unschooling is pretty cool because you just support your children uh, with whatever it is they would like to do. In the future, I don't imagine they will want to share a bed with us. They might not even want to share this space with us. And we imagine maybe building them some tree houses or getting them their own little yurt so that they can have a kind of little hub just off this main yurt when they're older and ready for their own space. We feel really fortunate that we were given a chance to live in a yurt and live off grid for a full year before completely committing to it. We got to see the downside of living in a year and we got to see how hard it can be trying to sustain yourself and your family in an off-grid situation. Anybody that I speak to who is considering this change in lifestyle, I ask them to try and achieve the same thing. Try and keep your eyes peeled for an opportunity to live for a few months with solar energy or in an interesting earth build or whatever it is you're thinking about doing for yourself, try and find an opportunity to really try it out and really discover the dark side of it. It can be really formative in your choices. <laughs>